Retroarch, the crown jewel of the emulation community. The ultimate cross-platform emulator front-end with its own respective cores for emulating dozens of platforms, but with great power comes great responsibility. For new users, Retroarch can be overwhelming. What's a core? What's a BIOS? What's Netplay? And why bother? I may not be able to help you there, but I do find it somewhat annoying that you can't open ROMs from Windows Explorer by double-clicking on them. This is difficult for Retroarch to do themselves, as individual file extensions or games can be compatible with multiple cores that emulate the same system. So I sought out to fix that, by spending like 8 hours writing a script that automates knowing what ROM corresponds to what core. Epic coding montage, go. So start here with declaring our libraries and custom functions, we move straight into the CLI functionality. We're going to need to handle the arguments by slicing off the first two, which are loser crap and we don't need them. Now we can see if someone put no arguments or asked the program for help and give them a little supportive message. Now we need to handle the config generation code by making sure the config doesn't already exist, and if it doesn't, we just store the default config in a variable and store it to config.json. Now the config is set up and we can handle the actual code. We want to do some logic so we can get both the file extension of the ROM and we go to our config and see which core we want to open it with. Throw in some error detection to avoid unwanted crashes and once we know the ROM type, the core we want to use, and where RetroArch is installed, go ahead and run it. But this is just a JavaScript file so we need to make a new build.js file and throw all of our executable configurations in as well as an icon. Actually install the libraries we use to generate the config, boom. Now if we want to launch 2048, we just set it here to open with our executable and boom. All this and it still doesn't make me better at the game. Yeah, that's about it. Short video, I know. But I just wanted to showcase the thing I made during my sick day. If this at all looks useful to you and you use RetroArch on Windows, the link to both its GitHub and my website are going to be in the description. Okay, bye is what I would have said if I didn't post it on Reddit. <clears throat> I post this on r slash RetroArch and oh my gosh. Let me address some of their concerns. Why not use a front end? I do! RetroArch has a built in one that scans your folders, however, it's not always super accurate. Why not use Playnight, which is a front end? I did, for years, but it can be kind of complicated at times, and that's just not why I made this program. Why not use Launchbox, a front end? Because it's freemium, more complicated than Playnight, and that's not why I made this program. Why not use a front end? Why not use a front end? Ah! Basically, every comment by me or someone else saying that front ends are not the solution to this specific problem were downvoted. Shout out to Ixo Rainbow for both sympathizing and mentioning their own script that they made for Linux. So if you use Linux and want some, something similar to what I made, please check out their program Enjoy in the description. Now let me address this. Why not use a front end? Because that is not why I made this. If I wanted a front end, I use the built-in RetroArch front end, which I do. But the reason I made this is so I could easily open one-off files from Explorer or want to save time. For example, my friend and I have been making homebrew, and every time they send me their next version, I'm not going to take 60 seconds to add it to a specific folder, open RetroArch, set it to rescan the folder and adjust the metadata, when I can just double click it. I found an issue that I had, I made a fix, and I shared it. Alright, that's me done ranting. Who's denser? Me or Reddit? Answer in the comments. Ciao.